our lesson for you to help uh, with your own individual tasks. Uh, the first was the presentation with initial data you've uh, needed to prepare for uh, CFD simulation. And the second, I've sent you several minutes uh, ago, uh, this uh, was about material properties that you uh, always uh, also will need to set up during uh, the, the uh, pre-processing of your model, but we will speak about this a little bit later. Mm -hmm. uh, so I will share with you my screen as always. So hopefully uh, all of you have um, um, the uh, workbench project with um, um, your profile blade, blades and this blades, as far as I know, everything is okay. Mr. Baturin help you to fix uh, some problems with these blades. Yes, uh, yes. And, and um, now we need to do the first steps, uh, which are the mesh and the computational model itself. Uh, so my suggestion was uh, uh, to uh, do for all of us step by step first, for example, compressor, then turbine or vice versa, it doesn't matter. Uh, I mean, of course, you will perform the um, calculation all, only uh, for your turbo machinery, but I think it might be interesting for you to know some specific features, how to deal with uh, another type of uh, turbo machinery. So if you haven't shared the project with uh, each other, just you can just uh, follow the instruction as you wish. It's not uh, obligatory. Uh, but still, we will start with, I think, with compressor. Uh, yeah, maybe we should start with turbine, no? Because Nicolas will not be here today ah. and he has the compressor. So if it doesn't matter for you guys, I don't know. Ah, OK, OK. Uh, because, uh, yeah, no, for me, it's the same. It's the same, I will do both, so I don't care. Okay, okay. Actually, I thought that we can do today both uh, compressor and turbine, but okay, uh -huh. we can do compressor next time, or we will see, because, um, um, I mean, um, the, uh, the recording will be available for all of you. Okay, let's see how it's going and uh, decide later. So let's then start <laughs> with turbine. Because um, actually, turbine is uh, easier um, for creating mesh and easier for setting up uh, the computational model. Uh, so we are starting with a nozzle guide vein, and um, I've removed uh, turbo grid blocks, but I don't know uh, whether you have them or not. But if you don't have your mm. turbo grid blocks, you need to uh, press uh, right button, then transfer data to new and turbo grid uh, for the nozzle guide vane and uh, separately for the rotor blade you need uh, to do the same uh, steps. Um, then we can start with uh, the nozzle guide vane, double click uh, on the turbo mesh uh, line and we are waiting for the turbo grid opening. Uh, once again, Grid. This is a special uh, mesh generator for turbo machinery, uh, and um, there are several um, uh, templates which are very useful uh, to create structured mesh uh, for uh, turbo machinery blade passages. So it's very useful. Uh, what can we see here? This is our blade. Uh, and the um, space around the blade we uh, would like to create in uh, in a green line. This is a leading edge of our bla blade. Red line, this is a threading edge of our blade. Uh, the blue, uh, um, uh, with blue, uh, the uh, hub section is colored. With gray, the shroud section is colored, so you can Remove them to see what what what, what we have here. Okay. So, uh, so, sorry, Daria. Yes. Uh, I don't know if you can help me, but when I open Turbo Grid, it gives an error. Something uh, is wrong, maybe in the file, or maybe you know about what's that. Uh, could you please send me the screen of the error? 
yes. Uh -huh. It says. Wait. Okay. It's the file uh, Mr. Baturin sent me. Mm -hmm. So it's no. and, I will and try I will try to open rotor blade too. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. And in uh, blade again, everything is okay. You can see your blades and uh, you can change them and everything is okay at the uh, first. Yes, it's, uh, but it's, um, it's a stack file. It's not, uh, I opened it, the stack file uh, Baturin sent me. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's a problem with the, um, I don't know, with me, the mesh. me it's working. I'm trying to open your file, Guido, to check. Mm -hmm. Yes, my file in uh, Blade Gen works. Yes, but it's I will try to open, open the, the other. But in Blade Gen, you can see the 3D blade, for example, everything is okay with the 3D blade in, in Blade Gen, yes? Yes, everything is perfect. And um, could you please also check uh, Mm, the uh, model properties. I mean, uh, whether millimeters are selected as the units for your uh, for your blade. Mm -hmm. or not. Yes, you're right. It's not millimeters. Yes, mm -hmm. it was nothing. And you have to when you have the 3D in tool, you have to put on centroid normally. Mm -hmm. Yes, I will stack blade on centroid. Okay, save. Normally, it should work. Because the same for me, Guido, uh, Mr. Batterin just sends a file, but when we insert mm -hmm. it in the blade, uh, in blade gen, we have to again put in millimeters and put on centroid. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, and now yes. I'm, I'm opening the turbo grid again. Let's mm -hmm. see if it works. I hope. Mm. Is, as, as far as I understood, this uh, stack file is just the information. It's not the the whole file of of your uh, blade. So maybe. Yes. This, this okay, is now it, it opened the file, but I can't see the blade. Uh, maybe <laughs> maybe you need to delete uh, to the grid uh, box and create it. Uh, Once create again. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sorry for all these mistakes. Okay. Transfer data to new turbo grid. Okay, now I see that. Perfect. Uh -huh. Okay, now it looks good. Okay, thank you. Very good. Hello. Okay. Uh, so, uh, actually, uh, we do not need to do a lot of settings for the mesh in Turbo Grid. Um, but uh, first, as you can see, the hub section and the shroud section, um, they are um, shorter than the inlet area we've created in the blade can. So we need to fix this first. Um, we are going to this uh, inlet uh, menu. And uh, we need to fix the Excel coordinate of low hub point and low shroud point. Uh, of course, for example, we will start with low hub point. Uh, of course, if you remember the coordinate uh, of this point, which were minus 55, you can uh, insert these coordinates, but uh, if some case you've forgotten the uh, exact values, uh, for example, you can do um, 
the value which is obviously bigger than the coordinate of this point, for example, minus one, and press apply, and the problem will automatically stop at the boundary. Uh, the same is for the shroud, uh, low shroud point. You also can set up minus one, for example, and press apply. And uh, this, uh, the uh, shroud um, plane will be extended till the boundary as well. Uh, for the outlet uh, section, uh, normally everything is going well. Uh, we just need to check uh, whether the coordinates are correct or not. Uh, this coordinate you actually need to, to remember because uh, by this coordinate, two our blades will be connected further in the sphere fix. Uh, for this point, 55 uh, was for Excel coordinate, as we can see. Uh, for my example, it's correct. Uh, for your, please check that uh, here you have uh, 55 uh, millimeters for Excel coordinate for both hub and shroud uh, low points. We, we need to have the same coordinate for hub and shroud? Yes. Or it, yes, this is, uh, this is for Excel coordinate. I mean, this is this boundary. This okay. One. Because, yeah. for instance, me... Uh, I don't have 0 0.055, but minus 0 0.05. Mm. For the outlet or for the inlet? Outlet. Mm. Yes, I don't have 0 0.55 uh, too. Because maybe it's because, in fact, uh, it's we have uh, dealt with our geometry, not from the geometry of uh, the power points. So that maybe. Maybe because of this, we have we don't have the same information, no? Uh, okay, maybe, but um, you need to be sure that um, at the outlet of yes. Northern Guide Way, uh, for Excel coordinates, you will have the same values as for the uh, inlet of the rotor blade. Okay, but it means that normally, if you, if on blade gen we have a well parameter, it's mm -hmm. okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. 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 So uh, don't worry, we can uh, fix and check it later. Just, uh, just I am telling you the procedure of what we need to check or of mm -hmm. what we need to fix at this uh, point. Uh, so just in the, at this step, it's very important uh, to remember then your coordinates of the outlet uh, uh, boundary to be sure that everything will be okay when we will try to connect uh, to blades. Uh, so uh, for the stator blade for both uh, turbine and compressor, you will need to, uh, you will not need to set up any additional. Uh, parameters uh, in terms of geometry. So now we can go to the mesh parameter. Uh, here we have uh, the uh, menu which is called topology set and you can see that this topology set is suspended now. So because uh, when we perform some changes to geometry uh, program each time will change the topology um, and we would like to avoid this at the very beginning, but now we would like to create the topology for our blade and we need to remove this uh, suspend object update. And we will wait uh, for some time. Uh, during this uh, operation, the uh, program will create the blocked uh, structured, um, me not mesh, the topology, uh, according to which uh, further the mesh uh, for your uh, turbo machinery blade will be created. So because the blade passage and the shape of the blade uh, of turbo machinery, they are very complex. Uh, uh, just a second, here we have the warning uh, because you can see that the topology and our preliminary uh, inlet uh, area domain is not, uh, they are not corresponded. But this is okay. We will assume the topology which uh, is um, uh, suggested by by the uh, by the turbo grid. This is not a mistake. It's just a warning. 
So, okay. as you can see, the, um, the geometry is very complex here, and to create the structured mesh uh, for each like uh, part of the geometry, it is very important to create these blocks. You can see that uh, there are several blocks, uh, uh, for example, um, around the blade, uh, in the inlet uh, domain, uh, in the outlet domain. So this was done to uh, by the program uh, to perform the creation of a good structured mesh for our blade. So, and this is a feature of uh, Turbo Grid in terms of Turbo Machine. So, uh, this is uh, the topology. This is not the mesh itself. Uh, and now we need to, to go to mesh data uh, to set up some parameters for our uh, nozzle guide train. Uh, first, we would like to set up the number of uh, elements uh, in our mesh. So that is why we will change the methods to uh, target passage mesh size. Um, yeah, and the mm, sorry, but. Mm -hmm. Just for me, uh, they say that there is a problem in the mesh data. Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, just when when I have the warning uh, box, we have mm -hmm. to click on OK. Yes, yes. OK, but what, okay, when I click on OK, uh, the same in red mesh, mesh data error, layers error, urban layer one error. Uh, right. Here yes. in, in, this, in this area, uh just uh, after you know in mesh da mesh data mm -hmm. yes here here um could you please also send me the screen with uh, yes. with uh, these errors yep And for the other guys, is everything is, is okay with, at this uh, stage? Mm, yes, actually, I have the same uh, like Kevin, but I, I think it's because of the outlet, uh, of the inlet, sorry. But mm -hmm. uh, in the inlet, uh, we have to type minus one in the coordinates. Okay, uh, let's, let's speak about the coordinates. Um, just a second. Yeah, maybe this is because of the coordinates. So uh, we need to be sure about our coordinate system then. Um, for example, uh, maybe you remember that um, for my example, my zero coordinate was here. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, for compressor, but for turbine, it will be the same. For rest too, yes. Uh, here I had zero, mm -hmm. so that means that my uh, left point or the location of the inlet boundary will be minus 50 for me in meters. Yes, the same for us here for this and, one. And the, this point for the outlet has to be 55. Uh, yes, but for, for us this one is not 55. Mm -hmm. So, could you please by hand uh, um, change the coordinate of the uh, our outlet uh, um, boundary in Turbo Grid? But, but can, yes, uh, can I we do that? Okay. No, but it's okay. Automatically, it's a good value, I think. What do you mean, Kevin? Uh, the value of uh, the outlet. I oh, know the outlet is correct now, or we have to modify. Uh, 
Kevin, uh, this um, for your uh, screen, I can see that uh, the low hub and low shroud yes. of minus uh, zero uh, zero yeah. point uh, zero five. These coordinates are for the inlet, and what coordinates do you have for the out? Mm. Ah, yes, 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 yes. Yes, okay. No, uh, it's correct. It's the uh, gold values. Because I I if you have the same coordinate system as me, then uh, for the inlet you have to have these coordinates and for the outlet these coordinates. Uh, yeah. So for the inlet, of course, we have uh, the same, yes, mm -hmm. for, a for axial. Mm-hmm. Yes, but for outlet, because we don't have the same geometry, mm -hmm. um, I have different points, but uh, uh, it's a good value of the outlet that I should have, yes. According mm -hmm. to my geometry, it's a good one. It's a good value, yes. So, 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 so. Uh, and still you have an error, or not? Um, uh, yes, but I think it's because... Uh, when uh, on topology set, uh, when we are doing the mesh, the mesh we have the box when uh, they say that uh, topology, uh, I don't know. And uh, it's at this moment that when I click OK, it, mm -hmm. it is becoming red. Hmm. Interesting. Um, um, yeah, so uh, once again, uh, you have these coordinates for inlet and outlet, and for this stage, you didn't uh, change any of them. Uh, no, I have uh, I have put my geometry from the yes. prototype. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's coherent with you. It just it just you you have your values and I have mine. And but yes, yes. For, for radius, obviously, we will have different uh, coordinates. Yes. Mm -hmm. Maybe maybe I should start to suspend the object. Yes, and uh, and try again. Yeah, I will try that too. Because mm -hmm. Guido, you have the same error or not? Yes, I have the same error. Different outlet, same inlet. But, but uh, these points, uh, this one, they yes. are located in the like beginning and in the end of your uh, mm. of your box. Yes. Mm -hmm. mm. Now it's walking. Oh, it's walking. It's oh, out. So warning. Yes, the precise warning is there is no valid inlet domain to mesh uh -huh. Uh -huh. and there is no valid outlet yes. domain. Yes. And you can just press OK. Yes, and this is error. And, and, and could you please... Um, mm, Click on the hub error and layer one error. Mm, okay, so on the hub error, it's uh, minimum face angle and minimum my maximum face angle. Okay, okay, I understand. So um, this is uh, mm, this is the errors of the mesh quality. Maybe yes. because of the difference of the uh, version of the ANSYS. So uh, at this uh, stage, I do not have uh, the warnings about the mesh quality. And for you, you have the information already about the mesh quality. Yes. So, uh, let's just proceed and we yes. will fix uh, these uh, errors a little bit later. Okay. Uh, so uh, for the mesh data, uh, we need to set up the number of um, the number of nodes per uh, per passage. So, uh, 
so uh, there are several um, like um, um, coarse, medium, and fine uh, variants for our mesh, or you can specify the uh, desirable um, uh, amount of the nodes. So we will use approximately, um, I don't know, let's uh, do 500,000 for each plate passage. But um, you need to understand that this number is rather small and um, this is only for educational process uh, and um, only for your uh, simulation uh, will be fast and stable. But of course, if we speak about some engineering task, the um, number of uh, nodes per passage uh, may be like uh, 10 times bigger or even more. So okay. for this, this value for RAS for now is uh, totally okay. 500,000, okay. Yes, 500,000. Mm -hmm. We press apply. Uh, also, um, as you can see, the um, the program created not only the blocks of structured mesh, uh, but also the boundary layer around the the blade. Because here we have we will have the um, the most complex processes near the um, wall of the blade, and the program thinks about uh, this because. Um, Turbocrete know about the, some specific features of turbo machinery and created this uh, boundary layer. Okay. okay. Um, just just to say, now it's better. Before we had error and mesh data, and now it's okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me too. The error is gone, mm -hmm. but I still have error in uh, layers. Yes, but we will fix it. Uh, the next okay. Time. Maybe yes. By uh, working, it will fix. So uh, now uh, we need to press uh, this button, mesh. Uh, to generate 3D mesh. And when my uh, 3D mesh will be created, you can see that now I also have some errors uh, about the mesh quality. Uh, so, could I please open this uh, mesh analysis error, so the mesh statistics. Mm -hmm. uh, so, us, um, all the parameters. Uh, hey, must... Nicholas. Good, good morning, Pro good morning, Prof. I'm sorry, hello, hello. But hello. I had um, I had a problem with another professor, and I received an unexpected call. Oh, okay. It, Hopefully it was... now everything is okay with this professor. Yes, yes, everything uh, is quite okay. Thank you, and uh, I will follow the lesson after. Uh, I join with a compressor, maybe. Okay, uh, I, but do you have the project with turbine blades or not? Uh, I have the project that I've done uh, for the. Um... O only for your compressor. Yes. No, we we shared uh, our project with everyone in the oh. Google uh, folder. Okay. Okay, maybe for now you can uh, uh, for I mean for. Um, for nozzle guide when you can just follow the uh, the lecture, but uh, for rotor blade you can open the the project the guys shared with you and do with us together turbine blades too. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, and um, speaking about the critical parameters here, all except for the third parameter and fifth parameter must be in with uh, with good values so if you have uh, uh, for the minimum phase angle maximum phase angle uh, minimum volume and uh, the last one activity number uh, the error that means that you need to fix your uh, mesh quality uh, the third and the fifth parameters they are not so critical for us and even um, if you have some um, uh, warning, some errors from the program, this is not very uh, important for us. And also, uh, you can see that the um, the amount of bad uh, elements in our mesh is not very big, so we can skip this uh, information. 
but I would like to uh, show you uh, just for your interest how can you influence uh, the um, th these parameters by changing which um, which parameters you can do this. Uh, first of all, for example, we, if we are going to passage uh, tab, uh, you have this uh, box of spanwise play distribution parameter. So that means um, how the parameters of the mesh are distributing along the head of your plate. Uh, if you also go to 3D mesh, uh, you can um, Mm, activate different different layers of your uh, mesh for example just a second high blade or high periodic and you can see what um, what is the quality of your mesh here uh, I will do this for better representation uh, so um, this is a, the mesh um, along the plate head. Uh, you can uh, try to um, change this method, uh, these factors. Uh, for example, now we have factor of one, um, which give us the number of elements um, here uh, along the head of uh, 39 and the constant element of seven constant element they are located in the middle of the um, of the blade so that means that we have uh, seven elements with constant uh, height so changing the this co coefficient for example to high values uh, you will get the bigger number of elements here and the bigger number of constant elements here. Uh, also, if you select the uh, methods of element count and size, uh, you can use not the factor, or, um, but you can change exactly the number of elements and exactly the number of constant element. Um, I understand that for the, like, first stage it's uh, quite difficult to understand uh, the connection between uh, the parameter and the mesh quality uh, but still you can play with uh, these parameters to see uh, whether you will get better results for your mesh or not so um, for example let's do the following second I will generate the mesh once again. Uh, I will go to the mesh uh, analysis and by double click on the parameter you can see where the bed uh, elements are located. Mm -hmm. So here and uh, here near the um, near the um, sorry, trailing edge uh, of course, for you, the location of bed elements uh, could be different because of the different uh, shape of our blades, but still you can look at them here. Um, so, and uh, we can try, for example, here we have not very bad, big amount of bed elements, uh, but still we can try to do something with them. For example, we can increase this factor. Press apply. Regenerate the mesh once again. Uh, yeah, and now we can see that when we increase the number of elements along the head of the blade, uh, the amount of these bad elements became became even uh, even lower. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what else can you do to um, uh, change the appearance of your mesh is uh, to change uh, at the first step mesh size and in the box boundary layer refinement control um, these factors. 
uh, they will influence. Uh, I will show you just a second. They will uh, obviously influence the boundary layer uh, appearance um, near the blade. But with these factors, you need to be careful because um, I I've, once I've tried to improve my mesh and I've got very uh, good statistics uh, for our mesh, but I, I didn't get the boundary layer near, near the blade. So the, the mesh elements was perfect, but without boundary layer. And we understand that it's, it's not uh, appropriate when we speak about uh, machinery tasks. So just a second, I will show you what I'm talking about. I think it's it's better to go to the um, trading age. Because it's more representative for for us. So when we change uh, these factors, for example, uh, factor B, will increase uh, you need to, to look at uh, the blade um, or the mesh uh, near the blade and press apply so increasing these factors you will get a bigger boundary layer and decreasing of course like this So in this case, there is no boundary, boundary layer uh, at all for, for, for the blade. Um, and uh, with uh, this factor, it also, also will change the elements near, near the blade. So the elements became bigger. Or, of course, they can be... They can be smaller. Uh, I just showed you this uh, this instrument to know how to change the mesh. But for the first um, steps in turbo machinery, my suggestion is to not change uh, anything um, with this factor um, unless you have very big problem with your mesh. But hopefully, there will be no problem with your mesh at all. Okay, that's so. Yes, good. Okay, uh, I have some problems with the, the trailing edge, so I can change the passage as we did before, changing the playing with the proportional uh, mm -hmm. factor. Yes, you can do that. I could do that. Okay. What we do? I have problems with the um, trailing edge. Oh, you know. There are some uh, yes, some mistakes in the in the mesh, uh, bad elements. So oh, I can oh, change. Oh, uh, oh. You see uh, that you have problems. Because. Uh, when you go to the mesh statistics and um, uh, you have this red uh, uh, lines, so, uh, meaning that uh, there are some bad elements, you can double click on them and you will see where these uh, bad elements are located. Okay. But once again, uh, the number of these elements is not very huge and um, kind of tasks like educational tasks this is uh, quite okay to have uh, these uh, bad elements moreover we are, we are working with uh, only like two layers of our blade so we perform the profiling for only hub and shroud so of course we, when we're speaking about some engineering task more uh, layers are used to create the blade so the blade geometry will be um, uh, more precise and of course uh, in this case uh, the mesh will be more complex 
So, and only in this case, you, you will need uh, to worry about the bad elements uh, somewhere. Okay. Uh, and uh, as you can see, this uh, not very good element, they are not exactly near the blade. So, this will change a lot the results of our calculation. Mm. So, any, any questions here? Mm, no, but uh, we always have in red minimum face angle and maximum face angle that is red, but... Sorry, yes. Once again? So the, the, yes, the two first are red for me. Are red for you? Yes. Yes, uh, for me too. That's why I was changing. Yes. Uh, so, where are these elements allocated? I don't know, but I think it's due to the uh, layers error. No? Mm -hmm. uh, here, in layers, you have not only the hub and shroud, yes? You have... In, yeah, layer. no, in, la in layers, we have hub, layer one, mm -hmm. and shroud. Uh, you can try uh, to remove this layer one and regenerate the mesh. So, okay. So delete layer one. But but uh, speaking about profiling, you perform the profiling only for hub and shroud. Yep, correct. Uh, yes. Oh, mm -hmm. I mean for two sections only, like me. Yes. Mm -hmm. mm. But when when I remesh, mm -hmm. the layer one uh, appears. Yeah, appears again. And um, using this uh, button, um, there are the menu details of layers. How many layers do you have here? Three. Three. Uh, layer one and shroud. And if you try to remove layer one from this menu and regenerate it once again. No, again, okay. it's creating layer one. Mm -hmm. So let me think. Let me think. Do, 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 do. Yes, for me, it's the same. And all of my bad elements are in the trailing edge. Yes, yeah, the same. Because, uh, Daria, I don't know if uh, Mr. Baturin told you, but he said us that uh, there was one thing that you didn't told us about mm -hmm. uh, maybe the trailing edge. Uh, I don't really know. I will check my mails to tell you. It was about cropping something, or I don't remember. not three. Maybe Mr. Butter will change uh, something in this uh, project so you can open mm. and uh, you can you need to be sure that uh, you have only two uh, black dots like half and shroud and not yes. the middle one. Maybe that is. So we, we close Turbo Grid and open Blade Gen? Uh, not necessarily. You can uh, open uh, the blade gen, and uh, uh, when you uh, change something in the blade gen, TurboGrid will uh, re read uh, the the file or from blade gen. Yes. So I can confirm you that we have one, two, three, four, five. Huh. Yes. Too many. Yes. 
But I think it's due to SKT. When we export or import an mm -hmm. SKT file, it's automatically created layers. Yes, also our profile is a spline with many, many, many points. Yes, yes, yes. Not just two or three points. It's when you export, it will change everything. But now I think that we can keep only two layers. Mm -hmm. And so how, how do we have to do to erase, to delete uh, layers? So click. you can click right, right, right button, layer control. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you need to deactivate the other okay. layers. For. Okay. But please uh, check the appearance of your uh, 3D appearance of your blade and press uh, one second <laughs> stack blade on centroid to be sure that everything is, is okay with your blade. I mean that uh, nothing bad happens to the hub and shroud profiles. Mm -hmm. Do you want to refresh simulation? Yes. yes. Because I think during the exp um, import of your file, uh, there could be some uh, unphysical shapes of the um, of the mesh uh, in the. Uh, this new layers, this could be the problem. Mm -hmm. Now it's remeshing everything. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You need to wait for some time. Okay. okay, so the layer one is still here, but I can delete it, I think. Mm -hmm. Yes, for me the same. Oh, I don't understand. It's creating one more layer one. Yes. It's very strange. Yes. But whatever, uh, when the mesh is done, yes. we can erase this layer, this, delete this layer one. Mm -hmm. Yes, and after in layer, we only have hub and shroud. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yes, then we still have error in layer hub because mm -hmm. due to minimum face angle and maximum face angle. But uh, maybe we have to keep it. Uh... Uh, do, 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 do. Let me think, let me see. Um, where were the bad um, elements located exactly? Uh, I mean, uh, uh, the top uh, section near the leading edge or trailing edge? Um, For me, uh, it's near the trailing edge. Mm -hmm. And um, it, uh, if you look closer to the trailing edge, uh, is everything okay with the shape uh, of it? I mean, um, you need to look at the mesh. Um, second. It's um, my bad elements are along the height of the blade, so mm -hmm. it's just a line uh, along the height. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so I'm missing what can you do? Ah, but Daria, when we delete the layer one, mm -hmm. we can't after uh, go to mesh analysis. After it's blocked. Mm. 
Interesting. And um, could you please uh, close the turbo grid and open blade again once again? Without saving everything? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm. So we are, I'm going to blade gen again? Yes. Okay. Um, so I, I think maybe for compressor guys it's not very interesting right now and um, I, I don't know, do, do you need to follow this lesson or, or not or you would like to join uh, only for compressor part, I think it could be okay for you not to uh, lose time for dealing uh, us with this specific uh, uh, errors, what, what do you think? I mean I'm okay with this. At this moment, I'm doing. I'm trying to do the Kevin's file. Ah, okay. The same as Kevin, but uh, I can just try to follow and just to understand. But it's up to you to decide. I mean, uh, this some specific uh, errors that uh, I mean uh, couldn't be the same for each uh, turbine blade. So it's up to you to decide what what. Of course, you can follow. Mm. Um, so okay. Kevin, what, what about uh, num the number of layers in Turbo uh, in Blade Gen now? Uh, two. Now it's two. Yes, show the top. So so so. <coughs> but maybe we don't have to just deactivate the layers, but to cancel them, to delete them. Maybe. Yeah, but but when we delete. <coughs> When we delete after me, I can't go to... Uh, no, 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 I mean um, in uh, Blade Gen. Ah, oh, in Blade Gen. Because we know. we only deactivated them. Maybe uh, we... Uh, ah. Uh, uh, because normally when uh, you... Um, like deactivate uh, the layer, um, that means uh, that it's not, um, it, uh, this layer uh, doesn't take part in creating the, bla or the blade geometry, so, and... Okay. okay. Uh, yes, I have found uh, the mail of Mr. Buttering mm -hmm. um, about... Uh, oh, maybe... About rounding. Mm -hmm. Run, uh, he said, uh, you have a common mistake, the output age is cropped, this is the default setting in blade gen, rounding, rounding had to be included, perhaps Daria did, did not say this to you. So uh, may, maybe but, that's why we have problem at the trading age. No? But uh, this, this information is, uh, is a common not for the turbine but for the compressor, you remember? Yes. For compressor, we change this um, okay. in in blade properties, but you you can check, of course, uh, whether for your uh, blades you have ellipse for both uh, LE type and TE type. But uh, no, I, have, have I don't off. have ellipse for uh, trailing edge type. Um, in this cut off. Because uh, when we use pre-chart um, methods to uh, profile the blades, both uh, trailing and leading gauge have to have ellipse as mm -hmm. a default option. <coughs> Maybe. Okay, so uh, I'll I'll select ellipse. Uh, wait, what it is again, please? Uh, blade property? Yeah, in Next blade to the cloud. E, C, E, ellipse tape, and for both. We have okay ellipse and ellipse. Yes. Okay. So is everything uh, okay with uh, this um, hub and shroud section after you've changed uh, the shape of the trailing cage? I don't see the difference, but mm -hmm. I have put on some trade again. Mm -hmm. Uh, now it's working. Ellipse. Il faut tout mettre en ellipse, Quentin, c'est ça? Yes, oui. Yes. Ok. Moi, je vais C'est LET type, je crois. Yes.
Uh, I think it was the problem. Maybe, maybe. And your answer version is 18, yeah? Yes. 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 Okay. okay. I'm doing the mesh again and uh, uh -huh. see. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. No, they looks all good. Is it possible? Yes, everything is good. Oh, perfect. <coughs> Found the solution. It's suspect. It's suspect it's, uh, that everything uh, is uh, strange. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> so now it's okay uh, with uh, minimum and maximum angle, yeah? Yes, everything is okay actually. Zero percent bad elements. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Uh, but uh, my mesh, mesh statistic is uh, disabled, found, disactivated. I don't know. I, mine was like that too, and I generate again mesh. Ah, Sorry. okay, maybe I have to generate again. <laughs> I oh, know it's still this. Mm. I still have layers to do, but. Yeah, but it's not visible. I don't have errors anymore. No. But in mesh analysis, mm -hmm. uh, this is okay, I can't go. Mesh limits too, but mesh statistics is disabled. Maybe for. You. Ah, yes, mesh statistic. Mesh statistic is disabled for us. Uh, but, yes. But can you see this 3D mesh? I mean, if you go to this 3D mesh, can you uh, try to activate some, some stuff and see whether it's visible or not? Yes, of course, everything is visible. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, yes, in fact, uh, 3D mesh is working. When we <laughs> click on mesh analysis, we can go 0% uh, bad. Mm -hmm. uh, mesh limits, it's mesh limits, okay. But in mesh statistics, it's disabled. We can't go. Yes. But uh, honestly, uh, I think that there is no problem in the mesh right now. We even in mesh analysis we have nothing in red. Um, okay, mm -hmm. I, I, um, mm, we can proceed with rotor blade and uh, yes. see uh, what will be with the mesh statistics for you in the in the rotor blade. Yes, maybe we can save too. Mm -hmm. And uh, before we will start with uh, rotor blade, I mean with turbo grid, please go to the blade uh, gen and uh, fix the trailing uh, edge uh, shape too. I think the mm -hmm. same thing with the, with, will be with the rotor blade. Mm -hmm. And I will check the unit also. Yeah, yes. check the units and, and sound read. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, if the mesh is uh, generated okay, you need to have this green tip uh, in, uh, in the tube mesh. It is. Mm -hmm. okay. Du coup, c'est ellipse, c'est ellipse, c'est important, excuse-moi, je t'en... Yes, 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 yeah. oui. And don't forget to delete the layers, uh, just disable them. Actually, I don't think that the layers no. actually the problems. It was about the shape of the of the trailing edge. Okay. Because a um, nozzle guide vein is uh, quite a straight blade without twisting, and um, I think additional layers they sometimes even help. We will see this in compressor uh, mesh, but. Mm -hmm. I think this was, was about the, the trailing edge shape.
Okay. Yep, so tell me when you're ready to proceed. Yeah, I'm ready. Oh, uh, yes. Ready? Yes, it's okay. Sorry. So, uh, I think from now I can join, right? Because mm, yes. Yes. yes okay. Of course. <laughs> <coughs> have, you, uh, have you found the project? Turbine blades, Nicholas? Uh, yes, yes. I use the um, the turbine that uh, that Kevin uh, have done. Okay, uh, but so you have to ch change in blade gen, uh, as we said. Yes, yes, I I delete the three la three layers. Mm -hmm. and, yes. and you need to change the shape of the uh, drilling edge and uh, to check whether the millimeters are the units of the project in blade gen. Yes, and finally put in some trade. Yes, is a uh, ellipse uh, and the unit is millimeters. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, make, put on centroid again, please. Uh -huh. Nico. Put centroid in a tool. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. Uh -huh. Tools. And normally there is something with a centroid. Okay, yes. Okay, so. made it. And save. Yeah. Okay. okay, I'm here. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Um, can we proceed? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, yes. so with the rotor blade, uh, the procedure is um, almost the same. So, first we need to fix uh, the inlet and outlet boundary. So, we are going to the inlet menu. Um, I um, need to have some additional points, but I will read them. Um, as um, I can see to, uh, about uh, my coordinate, the low hub point is okay, but the low shroud, po shroud point is not okay. Mm -hmm. So both of them must be 55 millimeters. Uh, to be in the same coordinate with the nozzle guide vein. So I and, correct. And for for us that are working on HPT, it's uh, 0 0.04099. Just. Mm. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. So, once again, the inlet coordinates of the rotor blade for the turbine must be the same as the outlet coordinate. Uh, as for the nozzle guide vein. Mm -hmm. okay. mm. um, Daria, I don't know because maybe it's due to approximation, but when I tried to do this, um, this uh, to, to have the same points, uh, it's not exactly, exactly the same. Oh, no, it's better. Um. Here, yeah, um, the same, you can try some uh, Small. Uh, yes. Regions. No, but and when doing this two times, it's a walking now. I don't understand. <laughs> yes, now it's okay. Uh, okay. After, after this course, you will ha hate ANSYS program, <laughs> I am sure. No, 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 no problem. <laughs> when it's walking, it's okay. <laughs> yes, sorry. Yes, we can proceed. Sorry. Okay, okay. <laughs> so, um, of course, we need to check the outlet coordinates. For me, they are bad too. And again, I can set up um, like 140 millimeters, or I just can press one, and the program will do um, for me. Ah, yes, because uh, for HPT it's different. Uh, give me five seconds okay, okay. for me to check.
1612. So you're working with uh, not <coughs> some uh, some uh, sample blade, you're working with uh, some prototype. Uh, yes. Yet? Yes. Uh, so for it's uh, 116.12 for okay. HPT. Okay. In so, uh, yes, so 0.116.12. 116.12. And the method is A and R. Okay. Yes, you just have to change the A. Uh -huh. okay. okay, yes. And you put the value 0 0.11612 for both. But for example, even in your case, uh, you maybe you can try to uh, put one here and the point have to shift towards the boundary uh, to the limit okay mm -hmm. and the coordinates have to be okay mm -hmm. because uh this wireframe uh it is um um it has the the coordinates we have created um, in the blade mm -hmm. okay okay but uh, at the first uh, step, uh, the program tell us, OK, I will not create the um, outlet area like you suggested. I would like uh, to do this area till here, for example. And we are telling, no, 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 you need to to end the, the p passage uh, here. So this this is the point. Yes. OK, yes. Okay. When we put one, I checked it's the same value. <laughs> mm -hmm. Perfect. Um, so, uh, and here with the rotor uh, blade, we need to think about uh, one uh, parameter we didn't uh, um, uh, check for the stator blade. We need to think about the radial gap uh, above the blade. So uh, that is why we are going to shroud tip menu. Um, of course, depending on the uh, configuration of your engine, would be the cases when there is a radial gap for the hub section for the nozzle, gui nozzle guide vein, for example. So in this case, you also can set up the hub tip. But in our educational task, we assume that there is no uh, hub tip for the uh, um, for the stator blades, only the shroud tip for the uh, rotor blades. So you need to activate this override upstream geometry. And we need to select the uh, normal distance um, parameter. So guys, if you're working with some uh, prototype, maybe you have the information about the value of the uh, radial gap. If not, this is OK. You can use 0 0.3 millimeters as typical value of the uh, radial gap uh, for, the, for the turbo machinery. But uh, also the some, um, sorry, just a second. Uh, for example, there could be the cases when uh, the uh, um, radial gap, gap is not constant along the length of the blade. And also you can set up the different values at the leading edge and at the trailing edge. I mean, in case you have this information for your, uh, for your engine. Mm -hmm. Okay, but when uh, we put normal distance and uh, <laughs> that the, the shape, it's not a line, but uh, it's a curve. It's okay or for the option? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, of course, if, if you go closer, you can can see this this. Uh, 
very very small distance between the blade and the and the shroud section. Very, very small. Mm -hmm. um, so this is the only difference for the rotor blade uh, uh, from the stator blade and for the compressor it will be the same situation and the same value uh, of, uh, of the um, radial gap. Um, again, we need to unspend uh, the topology set. Wait for some time um, for program to create the uh, topology blocks. Mm -hmm. um, now we are going to mesh data, uh, and and again we need to set up the number of uh, nodes. Uh, we can use the same value for all blades, um, compressor, turbines, doesn't matter, like uh, 500,000. Um, and to generate the 3D mesh. And check for the mesh statistics. I have the same problem as before. My mesh statistic is disabled. Uh, could you please uh, send me the screen? How it's like? Yes. <clears throat> Actually, I can click on that. Mm -hmm. But everything is good, I'll show you. And it's strange. But it's uh, deactivated, but still you can see, for example, where the bad elements are located. Um, no, because everything is good. I mean, 0% bad. Perfect. <laughs> it's really strange. Yes, me too. Is deactivated. There is the, um, there is the red symbol of deactivate. Mm -hmm. Uh, for me, it's activated. And I don't trust. What? What? Deactivated. Deactivated too. Well, it's not. Me, me, uh, me. It's activated with an error, and uh, just the maximum edge length ratio is uh -huh. red. Uh -huh. but it, it, it's okay. We can we can leave with these bad elements. Yes, just this one is in red. Uh -huh. My uh, yes, it actually is complaining. Uh, oh, we're not hearing you. So, what about the screen? Yes, I'm sending, but um, I don't know why they they're not going. I'll try that once again. Okay. <sighs> Oh, now it's activated for me. Magic. Um, what did you do? Uh, I just uh, uh, changed the factor base and factor ratio. Mm -hmm. Increased? Decreased. It was 3 0, I put 0 2. But and now I adjust one error. But when you change this uh, factor base and factor ratio, for example, and remesh once again, uh, your mesh uh, statistic uh, change and you have some bad elements now now or, or not? Because by default, I think it's our factor base is 3 mm -hmm. and factor ratio is 0. So I think we have to change before the first mesh. Um, it's in passage proportional? No, it's not this? Uh... Uh, mesh size. Ah, okay. By default, we have 3. For base size, vector okay. base, we have three. Yes. 
three years. And you think that we have to decrease it a little? Uh, me, I put zero and two, like uh, default for Dario, the same value. Ah, yes, because us, we have, oh. We have three and zero, I think. Yes, zero, two. Let's check. But for me, with three, it was working. Strange. Oh. Okay. Finally. I don't know why it was not working. Okay. Oh, good. So you see, it's kind of disabled on the left, and everything looks good, but it's not true, of course. But, uh, I mean, I don't think this is disabled because uh, I mean, you cannot display anything because you do not have bad bad elements. Mm. Maybe. Because, um, for example, for me, it's the same if I would like to look at maximum uh, base angle, the program not showing it to me. Okay, it, it's because there is the um, no, red no, sign uh, mm -hmm. on the mesh statistics, so it's kind of like, looks like an error. So, for example, uh, to be sure that everything is working, uh, for example, you can, I don't know, decrease the number of um, target not count to very small uh, value, I know, 20,000 or so. Uh, remesh it once again, uh, probably you will, you will get some bad elements, and uh, after that you can see these bad elements. Okay. No, oh, NCC is an am um, amazing software, amazing. <laughs> When it works, yes. When it <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and uh, and for Russian students, every time it's um, uh, always more complicated than uh, with answers because it's in English and oh, every yes. and every time <laughs> they, um, especially at the first step, they try to name the project with Russian letters or put this project in the folders with uh, Russian letters and every time it doesn't work, they... <laughs> and one, one student, I remember maybe a couple of years ago, told me why they didn't answer in Russian language uh, so if they are selling this this program in Russia. <laughs> <laughs> so how is it going with Mesh? It's okay. Uh, yes, yes. With me, yes. Only the error of uh -huh. uh, maximum edge length, but uh, only 1003. Uh -huh. So it's appro approximately the same value as you. So. Okay. I, I think we can proceed um, with creating the computational model if everybody is ready. I mean, uh, of course, you can try to change your mesh a little by, by yourself later. I mean, if you're interested in, in the influence of uh, different parameters. But for the initial mesh, this one is is okay and everything will be okay with your calculation. Okay. Okay. So we close to the grid. Save your project. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and uh, we need to combine our blades in one uh, CFX project uh, to do this um, doesn't matter um, in which mesh you press right button, transfer data to new CFX. 
and you need to pull the second uh, turbo mesh data to the setup and this this um, project will be combined in one uh, combinational model we open setup very worse <laughs> Um, you've got the um, the appearance of both your nozzle diaphragm and the rotor blade. I don't know how it's going uh, for your case, but um, in my case, you can see that the orientation of my blades is the same, which is uh, not correct. So the, yes. the orientation for one of the blades must must be vice versa. Uh, of course. Uh, um, for computer um, blades, it's okay to do the um, rever reverse uh, rotational direction in blade gen, but if you can, you if you will try to do this now, everything will be bad with your blade profile. So this is not the solution. So we will reflect our blades here in uh, CFX. Mm. So to do this, I will do this for the uh, for the nozzle between. I am selecting the mesh of the nozzle guide vein. Uh, click uh, right button and um, press transfer mesh. Okay. Uh, and in transformation, um, you need to select the option reflection. And we will reflect our mesh um, along XZ. We can, we can uh, by clicking this automatic transformation preview, we can um, see uh, the, um, <coughs> the and press apply. Um, we can see now that uh, the nozzle guide vein and the rotor blade they are not connected. But um, how to explain? This is only the, um, the appearance. In, in fact, they are connected because um, um, they have the same inlet and outlet coordinate. But to be sure that everything is OK, we can move slightly the nozzle guide vein. Um, so we can rotate it slightly along the Z axis by some angle. And no, let's try it. For example, rotation or translation? Rotation. Mm. Yeah. And now it is rotated slightly. And now both uh, both the main are connected. It was uh, not mm, like necessary step, but this will allow us to be sure that uh, the domains are connected. There is no gap between uh, them, and uh, I mean the inlet coordinates of the rotor blade are the same as the outlet coordinates of the nozzle guide. So, is translation or rotation? I don't, I don't rotation. understand. Rotation. rotation. Okay. And I think that only one degree is enough. Oh, okay. Just for, for Kevin, yes. Oh, no. uh, once again, so the lo location of these domains is not, um, how to explain, um, it, it is not necessary to try to uh, combine <coughs> them uh, very strictly because uh, the uh, calculation will be like you have the whole 360 uh, model because you will have periodic conditions and 
to transfer data from one domain to another domain, the special interface will be used. And um, uh, the orientation of this domain is, is not very important for this interface. Okay. Now we need to uh, set up all the uh, necessary boundary conditions like we uh, were done for the fluent, for example, inlet, outlet, the symmetry, and so on. Uh, of course, you can do this by hand, like uh, you have this uh, <coughs> domain, you can go to insert the main and create this domain and uh, all the boundaries um, like step by step uh, by hand, but uh, for um, turbo machinery there is a special mod which is called turbo mod, it is located in tools, turbo mod. And uh, this uh, will uh, allow us to do this uh, faster uh, with some special templates uh, for the um, for the uh, turbo machinery. So the first uh, the first menu is basic settings. Here we need to select the type of machine, which is axial turbine. Also, we need to check uh, the rotational axis. For us, this will be uh, Z, and this is correct. Uh, we will simulate steady state uh, problem. So everything is OK, and we can go next. Uh, here you have uh, the list of components which program created for us and uh, here you can see only one component which we which is not appropriate for us so you uh, select this component uh, right button and delete and we will create the components by ourselves uh, again uh, on the components uh, line um, right click add component so the first component, so uh, here uh, the main rule is that you need to go um, um, along the movement of the um, working fluent uh, um, like inside your turbo machinery. Uh, here it's quite simple because we have only one stage, but if you're working with a multi-stage turbo machinery, so uh, be sure that you are going step by step from the first nozzle guide vein to the first uh, rotor blade, then the second nozzle guide vein, and uh, mm -hmm. step step by step mm -hmm. to avoid to avoid some uh, mistakes further when creating uh, interfaces and and other uh, parameters. So the first component for us is stationary. The name is not very important here because once again we are dealing with uh, only one. Thing and press OK. Uh, at this uh, point, we need to select only the volumes which um, correspond to the nozzle guide vein. You can do it simply uh, by clicking on this uh, domain. You can open the list and uh, select uh, passage or passage main. It doesn't matter. So passage is is, is uh, um, connected with the uh, water plate. So we are selecting passage, press OK. And uh, then uh, we need to, to add the uh, second component, which is the water plate, which is a rotating component. Uh, also, we need to select uh, the, the main, which is passage. Uh, and uh, here we need we will we, we need to check uh, the um, um, orientation of uh, rotational speed for our rotor blade. Uh, so the rule here is that the blades of uh, turbine they are taken towards the uh, um, pressure side. Now we can see that. Uh, now the orientation of this vector is wrong because it's towards the suction side. So I, I don't know. Maybe for your case it's different and you have the right uh, orientation. But in my case, I need to uh, 
press minus and also I need to set up the values of the rotational speed that I have in my um, in my initial data. So for me it's uh, um, 8378. We will have totally different uh, parameters. Uh, sorry, can you explain again uh, why you changed uh, the, the the way? Okay, because uh, the turbine blades they are rotating uh, towards the suction side. Mm -hmm. So yes, okay. Uh -huh. I, I can see now that the orientation is okay. So maybe in your case it it will be different. I don't know. We need to check. This. Compressor, it's vice versa. So if we will, uh, if we simulate in the compressor, the location at the first point was was correct because for compressor blades, the rotation is going towards the pressure. Side. Uh, also for the uh, rotor rotor blade, we need to check uh, that um, in wall configuration, uh, uh, the tip clip clearance shroud is um, uh, selected as yes, but usually everything is okay at this point <coughs> because uh, a turbo grid and are connected with each other and uh, do not be problems here. And we can press next. Hey, Kevin, what about the, um, the speed? 12.005. Okay, thank you. So the next menu is about physics uh, definition. Uh, at this point, we just are uh, selecting the fluid as air ideal gas. So we will have air, uh, which properties will be changed uh, according to the um, ideal gas uh, properties. Um, and further, we will set up the special um, properties for separately uh, air with the properties of the combustion gases for the turbine and um, different properties for the air for the compressor. Um, for the reference pressure, we will set up zero because we would like to uh, operate with absolute values from our initial data. Mm -hmm. uh, total energy is okay we will, because we will use uh, energy equation in our simulation. Uh, turbulence model K epsilon is also okay. It's um, uh, good uh, selection. And uh, now speaking about the um, inflow outflow boundary conditions. So for uh, turbine, it's very typical to use the pair of total um, pressure at the inlet and static pressure at the outlet. Uh, so to set up this. Um, Mm, uh, parameters again I'm going to my initial condition so from your calculation this will be uh, P0 total and T0 total at the inlet so for me these values for you your own values mm -hmm. but do not uh, forget uh, about uh, changing uh, the units okay uh, so Nicholas if you want P0 it's one Two, three, one, three. One, two, two, eight, three, one, three. Pascal. Okay. It's okay, Nico. Ah, I'm sorry, the microphone. microphone. Yeah. Yes, it's okay. <laughs> ah, okay, okay, and. Uh, T total, it's uh, 15, 17. Kelvin. Okay. Wait a second, please. Da, 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 da. Okay. okay, how much is yours? Huh? For, for okay. me? For, for, for Ken? No, for, for the guys. Mm -hmm. Uh, you want in Pascal or in kilopascal? In, uh, in kilopascal, it's uh, 1228 kilo. Okay. No, okay. I'm okay with mine. 
just to understand if it was kilopascal or pascal. But sure. Yes, I, I gave the value in pascal. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, it's pascal, it's pascal. Okay, thank you. So, uh, for outflow, you need to set up a static pressure, which is P2, uh, from your calculation. Mm. Okay. Uh, guys, P2, in Pascal, it's... <laughs> four, seven... Nine nine three zero point seven. Okay. It's a P static. It's P two, not P star two. We are yes. yes. Yeah, yes, yes. Just to be sure. <coughs> Four seven nine nine three zero. <laughs> okay. Um. Yes. Also, we need to check that the flow direction is um, uh, set up as normal to boundary, which is um, appropriate for turbine because we know that for the uh, alpha zero, for the northern, northern guide vein, uh, this value is equal to 90 degrees, which exactly corresponds to the normal boundary um, um, orientation of the flow at the inlet boundary. So we will. We, we, um, don't need to change anything here for the turbine. For the compressor, we will set up the different um, orientation of the flow at the inlet boundary. Uh, and the last parameter here is the interface. Uh, the um, program um, suggests us uh, the stage interface and we will um, take this um, uh, selection. The stage interface uh, means that uh, the parameters at the outlet of the nozzle guide vein will be averaged uh, along the circumference uh, of the uh, um, nozzle guide vein, and then they will be transferred to the inlet uh, boundary of the rotor blade. Okay. So this is, this is a good option for our case. Um, then we press next. And, and, what, and what about the frozen rotor? Because uh, if we, for example, if um, I have a, in the compressor, I have the booster. So is it is like only one stage? Mm -hmm. So it could be the possible, possible uh, v variant uh, for you too. Okay, perfect. Um, then we are going to the... Um, uh, the interfaces uh, like by default you need to have four interfaces which correspond to the first one is um, mm, uh, R1 to R1 internal this interface uh, between uh, the tip of the uh, blade and the so or in, in the other words this corresponds to the uh, radial gap uh, area. I don't have this one. Yeah, I don't have two. Hmm. There we go. So let's go back to. Um, just a second. Yes. yes, we made before. To the component definition menu. Mm -hmm. uh, select R1 um, component. And in this whole configuration, check that there is tip clearance at shroud. Is correspond yes. To yes. 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 Okay. And and you do not have this uh, this interface. No. H how many of them do you have? Three. I have three. Yes. Three. Yes. I have four. Oh. Four. Four. <laughs> <laughs> I have five. <laughs> five. Oh. <laughs> uh, so, okay, uh, let's, let's check uh, the rest of the maybe, interfaces. Maybe it's when we select the, um, the region uh, in the component. Uh, I think R1 to R1 internally is, the, um, is what we made before. 
after blade generation, don't remember the name of the program, in Turbo Mesh. Yes, this the, was this was selected in Turbo Mesh. In Turbo Grid, I mean. Okay. Yes, maybe guys, you forgot to do that. Forgot what? So in uh, in uh, Turbo Mesh, um, mm -hmm. in, I mean in Turbo Grid. For rotor blade. For rotor blade, yeah, we selected uh, shroud tip. And set up the value of 0 0.3 millimeters. Yes. Mm. Yes. I remember. I'll check. And the shroud tip. Mm -hmm. Ah, yes, it disappeared. <laughs> <Maybe>. <laughs> Uh, press apply. Yes, it disappeared to me too. <laughs> you say, yes, yeah, so it's a uh, normal distance? Yes. Okay, and 0 0.3? Yes. Centimeters. No, no centimeters. Millimeters. Millimeters, and do not forget to press apply. 0 0.3 millimeters, apply. And now okay. we need to remesh. Mm, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And now mesh statistic is disabled for me, but <laughs> okay, we. <laughs> uh, okay, I save. Refresh the simulation. Mm -hmm. Okay, I hope it won't delete all the initial data. Maybe it will explode, huh? Maybe. <laughs> 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 okay, okay. Zero value are keep. Oh, amazing. One, two, three, four. <laughs> yes, <laughs> me too. Perfect. But uh, Nicholas, why you have five? Yeah, uh, but it's because I'm trying uh, the lesson later. Ah, and, okay, uh, okay. For uh, the first part of the lesson, I made a mesh without uh, taking account anything, mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. and in fact, I have another block of the volume after the blade. Uh, so mm -hmm. okay, that's whatever. why. Okay, no problem. Okay. So let's check. Uh, the interfaces. So the first one is for the uh, radial gap. Uh, mm -hmm. The second one is for the periodic boundary conditions. So in this case, um, the program will understand that uh, despite the fact we have only one blade passage, uh, then we can um, uh, post process in our results as we have the full soccer model. Uh, the second one is our stage interface uh, between the nozzle guide vane and the water blade. And the last one uh, is the same, but uh, periodic for the uh, stator blade. Yes, my one uh, in the last is divided in two parts, that's why. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But it's, it's okay, I mean, when we'll, you will do the compressor, you will do everything correct and you will avoid this. Uh, yes, this yes, of course. Um, so we uh, press next. Uh, here you just can you you can just um, check uh, the all the boundary conditions. For example, um, blade 
So the rotor hub and shroud and the outlet, I mean, that the program um, uh, set up all the boundaries correctly. Uh, and the interesting feature here is, um, in general, the, the main of the rotor blade is rotating, but uh, we um, setting up the um, radial gap, that means that the shroud uh, plane have to be uh, stationary. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, you can see that the program set up uh, the option counter rotating wall for the shroud. So, to uh, account for this uh, for this feature. Um, S1 blade and uh, hub and inlet and shroud. Also, you can um, check all the bond grip condition and this step and, um, and so on. We can press next and finish. First, if you made some mistakes uh, during the turbo mode, it's not a problem. Uh, fixed them later so now you can see the last list of all your domains like r1 and um, s1 and the list of all the uh, all the boundaries um, if you made a mistake for example with inlet temperature of course you can go to the r1 um, inlet and uh, or, I'm, I'm sorry uh, s1 inlet and uh, fix the boundary conditions it's it's not a problem Okay. Uh, also, you can see all the condition on your uh, model, like inlet here, outlet here, uh, with uh, these symbols, you know that there are periodic boundary conditions. Uh, with these green uh, triangles between the domains, you can see that there will be transferring of the data between these domains, like here too. Um, and 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 what else? Um, yeah, the list of the interfaces, which you also can um, uh, fix if you want. Um, I think that's all. Uh, the last parameters we need to set up here is um, solver controls. Um, yeah. uh, what is uh, server controls? Um, in solver menu. Okay. In solver controls. Okay. Um, so uh, here we are interested in the following. Uh, first of all, for uh, modeling the turbulence, you can select the option high resolution, which will be a uh, more precise uh, solution, but less stable. I mean, um, you can try to start up your model using high resolution, but if you have some problems, you can uh, go back to the first order and it's okay. Uh, also, we need to set up the number of uh, maximum iteration. Let's start with 1000. Uh, and we need to fi fix our convergence criteria. Uh, remember, we've done uh, similar steps in Fluent when we set up the residuals in monitors to the to a lower value. So just need to add uh, some zeros here. How many? Two, three is okay. <coughs> um, and uh, press OK. Uh, just at, uh, at which moment we have to put? Uh, uh, mass flow rate and everything. Uh, uh, you mean why? Why do we need the mass flow rate as a, the initial data? Yes. Um, actually, this is uh, more for the compressor or more for the checking the um, and the results um, after the calculation will be finished. Uh, I just. Uh, for some cases included into the initial data. For turbine, the most common uh, boundary condition is uh, pressure pressure at the outlet. This is just for uh, for the like, back, backup uh, cases. 
for okay. the compressor it will be mm, more necessary than for the turbine. Okay, okay. Uh, the same situation is uh, with the number of blades because um, when we will um, check uh, the solution after the calculation will be finished, you will uh, will need to know uh, how many um, blades you have exactly from the blade gen for nozzle guide vein and rotor blades. Mm -hmm. uh, but we will do this next time. Um, the last the last setting here is about material. So we are going to material menu, uh, and uh, we need to select air uh, ideal gas. Mm, in material group, you need to select only air data. Um, then we need to go to material properties, uh, but I will really do all the settings right now. I just would like to show you uh, what you will need to do. So you have this document, material properties. So uh, the first table and the, the third table just a second. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Okay. Uh, for turbine, you need the second table and the fourth table. The first and the third is for the compressor. So uh, these tables um, are necessary to set up all the um, material uh, properties, which will uh, be changed with 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 the temperature. So because now we have constant values, uh, you will need to set up molar mass, uh, specific heat capacity, not like value, but using zero pressure polynomial. Um, also, in transport properties, you will need to set up dynamic viscosity using a satellite formula. Um, you have all the coefficients for both uh, pol polynomial and uh, this formula in uh, these tables two and uh, tables four. Uh, for now, we, we can have just values. Uh, I would like to start the calculation to show you how can you uh, follow the correctness of the calculation. Um, so everything is ready now for starting the solver. Do you have any questions about setting up the model of turbine stage? Mm, no, no, no. Just no. changing the material, but it's on the world, so no, no question. I, the, the only question that I have is um, how many wide have to be the, the region of intersection between the, the guide vein and the rotor blade? So, so one, once again, how many wide have to be the region of intersection? And, and where, where do you have this this parameter? No, no, no. It's about is our previous uh, question that I have. Mm, uh, so, sorry, I, di I didn't get. Okay, uh, be between the the rotor blade and the guide vein, mm -hmm. there is a region of intersection of the mesh. Uh, you mean this one? Yeah. Yes, yes. How many, how much wide have to be? How many wide? I understand you correctly. So, uh, there, is, there have not be any, any distance between these this, uh, two no. domains. My, my two regions are uh, intersected uh, more than yours one. I ah, think. You, mean, you mean that uh, here there is no intersection? And and it's and it's okay, but uh, this is okay. Uh, I mean, um, um, uh, the intersection uh, of the outlet area of the nozzle guide vein and the inlet area yes. uh, of the rotor uh, blade is not important for us. So uh, the uh, solver thinks in the following way. So the flow is going inside the nozzle guide vein performing some uh, steps, and then the solver calculating the uh, parameters at this uh, outlet um, uh, area of the nozzle guide vein, then it's averaged these parameters uh, along the circumference of the nozzle guide vein. So um, after that, uh, the solver take these parameters 
and put these parameters on the inlet boundary of the um, rotor blade. So okay. in, this, in this case, it doesn't matter um, what is the, uh, like how much they are connected. So because all the parameters will be average circumferentially, like it's a um, 360 degree model. Okay, perfectly. So the, the, the connection is not important. As actually, we can, uh, they can be connected only by, I don't know, one millimeter or so. And okay. still, they, they, the transfer of, of data will be performed by the solver. Okay, thank you. Uh, so for now, I can close my computational model. Um, I will save my project and I will open my solution. What's the weather in, uh, in Russia? It's nice? It's, uh, it's okay, it's approximately 20 degrees above zero. Sunny. Nice. Amazing. Well, it's better <laughs> than here. It's like here, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but uh, and what about France? Well, in France, it, it depends. Uh, for instance, yes. yesterday it was twenty-five, uh, but uh, next uh, next week it will be like shit. Uh, I think so. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure about the next week. Sure. Okay, for Samara, approximately 20 degrees again. Perfect to go to Sweden. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, what can we do here? Uh, we can change the run mode from serial to um, uh, MPI, local, parallel, or platform MPI, something like this, just MPI. Mm -hmm. the, the names could be different depending on the release of the program. And um, um, I mm, will need, uh, will increase the number of um, mm, cores using which my uh, computational will be done. So if you have the academic version of the program, uh, it doesn't matter how many uh, processors do you have on your computer, the four is the limitation of the academic version. So, and I will use this number. I, I don't know about your version, but you can try for. Oh, it's correct. So, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay, then think about the the ability of your. Uh, yes, it's <laughs> um, I will start run. The solver is uh, very similar uh, to what we had uh, uh, for Fluent, but with uh, some. Uh, different appearance. So, I mean, the information will be approximately the same. Um, so, here on the left, we will have the information about our residuals, and uh, here the information uh, about each iteration, so uh, about all the equation that I included into our solution. Um, here it's the number of uh, iteration. Uh, here is the maximum uh, residual for this um, uh, equation, for example, and this is the um, uh, what is in um, English. Uh, this is a squared error. Uh, I mean, average error in the in the whole uh, domain. Just just a second, I will check. I, I have forgotten the it's translation. Qu quadratic error, maybe. Yes, yes, quadratic arrow. So, and um, here on the right, uh, it's the information of how um, this uh, equation was solved uh, at this particular iteration. With capital letter OK, then everything is OK. With small letters, it's it was solved, but in some acceptable way. It doesn't matter that, for example, the first iteration it will be with small letters, but 
further everything can be okay with uh, this uh, equation uh, after the solution is converging and with uh, f it's failed but also for one uh, equation uh, if you have this f letter it doesn't matter that this uh, equation will not be fixed for the further iterations um, so here uh, at momentum and mass uh, uh, you will have uh, information information about uh, residuals for this equation, uh, heat transfer, turbulence, uh, efficiency, it's not um, the same efficiency as we used, it's uh, created by the program. Uh, later when we will post-process the um, uh, results, I will show you how um, you can uh, calculate the efficiency. But also we can add some additional monitor to be sure that everything is okay with um, our calculation. So we go in somewhere here, press right button, new monitor, press OK. And we are interested in, in uh, imbalance uh, calculation. So um, we are interested in P mass imbalance in rotor and P imbalance in stator. Um, that means uh, by this monitor we will follow the continuity equation. And of mm -hmm. course, the, the imbalance uh, in both domains have to be near zero. So this uh, is an additional criteria for you uh, that everything is okay uh, with your solution and the solution was converged. Of course, uh, you need to follow uh, um, the rest of the residuals. They have to go down, down and at some point they will be uh, fluctuate a little around some value, but this uh, monitor is like additional um, criterion for you. Um, can you repeat, please, the plot monitor, which uh, parameters you you've mm -hmm. taken? Uh, we are selecting imbalance. Yes. Oh, and so, okay, imbalance. Yes, and P imbalance for both, um, P mass imbalance for both uh, rotor and stator. Okay, and apply. Okay, and this and uh, how we have to do with this information to to verify we should have which value which value zero. Zero, yeah. Okay. So that means that the amount of the working fluid inserting uh, in entering the um, for example uh, nozzle guide domain is the same as the uh, amount of the flow. Uh, which is going out from the nozzle guide domain. The same situation is with, with the rotor blade. So we're checking the continuous equation. Okay. Uh, so, uh, of course, this, uh, this uh, solution is not uh, correct now because you will need to set up the appropriate values for the uh, material. Mm -hmm. So uh, after that, you will start it in, in the same way. Uh, and uh, I know for, from the experience you will need approximately 300 to 500 uh, iterations until the, everything will be okay with this uh, uh, PMS monitor and with, with, with the other residuals. Uh, so you can uh, um, stop uh, your calculation whenever you want, just pressing this stop button. Uh, or um, for example, if you can see that, um, I don't know, 1000 iteration is not enough uh, for your calculation, you can uh, dynamically change uh, this, uh, the settings during the calculation. How, um, so you have this button, uh, dynamically uh, edit the settings. The program is asking you whether you would like to save, uh, save backup file, usually yes. Because, uh, for example, if we will change the number of iteration, that will not influence the uh, converging of your um, of your uh, solution. But if we will change some other parameters, the crash could be after these changes, and it's better to have this backup file. So uh, we are going to solver control and. Um, we are going to convergence control and we can fix the number of iteration. For example, 
I know that 500 iteration is enough. I will press OK. This is very important. You need to go to File, Save, and you need to close this window. After that, you will get the information in this text window that some changes were made for your um, project. Uh, and the solution now will stop after 500 iterations. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you say that it's it's enough, uh, 500, normally? Uh, normally, yes, uh, but you, of course, need to follow the behavior of the residuals. So yeah. it's, uh, you can see this information about the backup file was uh, saved mm -hmm. and uh, the number of uh, iteration was changed from 1000 um, to 500. Uh, Okay. So I, I think uh, that for the, uh, for the turbine, the calculation have to be rather smooth because uh, for the um, program, it's understandable why the air is going from the uh, bigger pressure to the lower pressure. With compressor, probably we will, we will have some some problems, but we will I think about this n n next time. Or what 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 would you like to do? Or, or we will proceed. It's up to you. I'm OK. Uh, for me, we can proceed uh, now or the next time. Is the same. OK. What do you think? Mm, it doesn't matter for me, too. Because mm. I, I can see that with compressor, it will be now faster. I mean, in terms of mesh or the other parameters. So my suggestion is to do it right now. and. Yeah. Uh, all of you can uh, can uh, start your calculations. Okay. 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 Yep. Okay. Oh. okay. Oh. And guys, what about your defense? I've heard that Mr. Vinagrado would like uh, you to do them via Skype or something. Like this. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, we don't know how it will <laughs> it will happen, but uh, we will see. Okay, I know that uh, one Indian guy from our department uh, recently had a PhD defense via Skype. Oh. So, <laughs> hopefully, uh, for you it also will 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 be okay. Uh, um. So with compressor, uh, we will need to do the same steps as for the turbine in terms of mesh. Um, I will create turbo grid uh, project uh, with this one. And can you wait a second? I have yes. to. Okay. The, uh, I'm loading. Project. Um, I will be in one minute. I would like to, to drink some water, okay? Yes, yes, yes sure. Okay. okay. <laughs> In terms of mesh, you need to understand that there is no uh, difference between compressor and turbine, so the steps will be exactly the same. Um, and <coughs> how you know how to do this for the turbine or compressor is the same. The only difference will be on uh, with uh, setting up the computational uh, the computational model.
And do we have to do the mesh by, by ourselves? Or are we waiting? Um, sorry, once again? Are, are we waiting someone? I don't understand. <laughs> Are we ready? Yes. I'm, I'm ready. Yes. 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 Okay, sorry. Uh, <laughs> let's start with uh, with the water plate. So, um, but I think first we need to to change in blade gen the the same as for turbine. Um, I, I because don't know. it's not it's not uh, ellipse for the properties. So. Uh, okay. Then yes, you need to change this. Okay, Quentin. Uh, your is not ellipse. I open at yours. No, 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 it's okay. not ellipse. So okay, I'll change that. Please check um, ellipse shape and the millimeter set as the units and stack blade on centroid. Okay. <laughs> and after the number of layers. Actually, uh, for um, a rotor blade of compressor, uh, especially if the blade is uh, twisted, uh, we will need additional layers um, okay. for the mesh generation. Uh, then, if you have more than two layers, uh, this could be okay for the rotor blade. I will I will show you on the example of my blade how can you fix some um, some problems. Okay. I'm ready. Me too. Me too. So, um, steps are the same. We're going to the inlet. Uh, Excel coordinates for both the up and shroud points. I will just set up minus one. We'll do the rest. Mm. For the outlet, we just need to check and the the coordinate is uh, of appropriate value. Because this is a rotor blade, we need to think about um, radial gap at shroud. Um, we're going to shroud tip, activate the tip option. We will use the same normal distance and the same value of uh, 0 0.3 millimeters. Do not forget to press apply. Okay. Next, we need to unsuspend our topology set. <coughs> Second, we 
I think I have some problems with with um, with the radial gap. I checked this project this morning and um, everything will be uh, okay. Then I open it once again and there were some problems with radial gap. Then again, okay. And now again, the problems with radial gap. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> and just check. I haven't changed anything for this blade. Okay, I, I don't want to deal with this problem right now, so um, I will use this um, uh, shroud tip. Uh, later, what will be different for you? Okay. Um, so, because it's obviously some back from the problem program. the topology set is created for our um, rotor blade I'm going to mesh data uh, and I will set up again a 500,000 um, knot count and press apply and I will generate my mesh uh, which uh, will obviously have uh, some problems. Uh, you can see that I have the information that uh, some uh, there are some uh, elements with negative volume, and my mesh statistic is very very bad now. And I definitely know that the problem is uh, near the trailing edge. I will show you the shape of my trailing edge. It's very very bad. But it's possible that every time the the percentage of bad elements is zero. <laughs> it's... Maybe. Mm. Maybe. I have the same error, right? Yes, I have negative volume too. Yes. I, I will show you what what is what is the problem, probably for you too. You can go to um, the shape of the. Um, of the drilling, drilling cage at the hub, uh, hub it's okay but let me check it's on the shroud wait a second I hate this program. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
the same this so usually this problem because the the um the rotor plate is twisted along the head and uh, it's rather the head is rather big uh, so in this case uh, adding the additional layers could be helpful for us um, except uh, actually in my case this is a solution maybe in yours not we will check this later so i need to add some layers in the middle uh, of the blade uh, uh, span uh, because now I have only hub and shroud and I would like to have a new layer for which the topology will be created. Mm -hmm. So uh, the program is um, suggesting me exactly in the middle um, of the span uh, location. Um, I will use this layer. Um, and the topology now will be created not only for the uh, hub shroud but also for this uh, layer two. And I will uh, now remesh my model. You see that in my case the orientation of the hub section and shroud is very different and for a uh, program sometimes it could be the problem and it's like need additional signals for um, creating the mesh. Now I'm going to my mesh analysis and I can see that this appearance of this additional layer uh, helped me to fix this minimum phase um, and maximum phase angles and I can check mm. the appearance of my um, leaning edge and now it looks okay how about yours yes okay I yes, had the layers okay. and it's okay mm -hmm. yeah the same so this this is because of the um, our orientation of the sections um, relatively each other but I think this this problem will be only for the rotor blade, not for the stator. This the stator blade is simpler. Um, yeah, everything is okay now. We can close the turbo grid for the rotor blade. And perform the same steps for the uh, guide wing. Okay, one moment. Mm -hmm. I have to change blade gen again. Okay. Yes, it's not ellipse, this one too. Yes, it is. Yes. Okay. Okay, I'm ready. Mm -hmm. um, again, the steps are the same. Uh, first, we are going to the inlet. And uh, um, we need to the Excel coordinates. For me, it's only for the um, hub uh, point. 
for the shroud everything is um, okay and for the outlet I need to fix um, both coordinates I simply will use one Okay. So there is no uh, tip or gap uh, for the stator blade, so we can uh, unsuspend uh, the polygons. data um, again we need to set up the number of 500,000 okay. and we are ready for mesh generation As you can see, in my case, for the uh, guide vein, uh, the statistic uh, is uh, even now okay without adding uh, additional layers. And how mm -hmm. about yours? I have one error, just for the maximum edge length ratio mm -hmm. for the... Uh, it's acceptable. So, if no one has uh, some critical errors, we can... Mm -hmm. And now we need to combine both um, uh, blades in one CFX project. blades for my compressor blades I uh, perform this um, reverse um, uh, rotational uh, direction so I just will check the orientation of my blades is okay so if you do not have the um, uh, if you have the same orientation of the blades uh, once again, you need to go to transfer mesh and uh, you need to ref uh, use reflection um, for X, uh, Z plane um, and preview is, ev is everything is okay and press apply. Okay. <laughs> Quentin, our is right. Yes, it's right, yes. Right, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. You just have to maybe to rotate a little bit yes, in order to match. Mm -hmm. So we, we also can um, try to check that there is no gap between these uh, these domains. Everything is connected. And as for, for turbine, we, all, we will also use this uh, turbo mod um, for uh, better setting up all, all the conditions. Because otherwise, every time you will need to insert, for example, domain, then in each domain, you will insert each boundary, indicating uh, to which location this boundary corresponds to. Uh, for example, if we're speaking about not turbo machinery, uh, but simulation of I don't know, a nozzle of uh, the uh, aircraft engine, so you can use this turbo mode and you need to do this by hand. Okay. Uh, we will use, in our case, this turbo mode. Mm, 
machine type for us it's excel compressor honestly i i don't know <laughs> uh to which this uh, selection is uh, connected for me no, no difference is happening but uh, <coughs> so let's let's use this um this setting press next um here also it's better to delete all the components and start from the very beginning. So um, we need to add the first one. And the first one for us is uh, the rotor blade. Um, then we need to select the passage. So the passage without the uh, two is uh, for the rotor blade. And um, uh, once again, we need to check uh, the um, rotation um, of uh, the rotor blade uh, for the compressor have to be towards the um, pressure side. Uh, now we can see that it's, for my case, now it's towards the pressure side. So I need to use minus. So now, or so maybe for the uh, shout section it's uh, not very um, how uh, informative uh, and it's better to follow the the shroud section to, to find various sections Um, also, um, in a, a wall configuration, it, you need to be sure that there is a tip clearance shroud. So I will press no in order to avoid uh, some mistakes. Uh, um, of course, you need to stop the rotational speed from your own calculation. Mm -hmm. uh, and we need to add the next component with is uh, stationary okay and uh, and here of course we just need to, to select the passage too okay um that's all we press next uh, this physics definition it's uh, uh, air ideal gas zero for reference pressure, uh, total energy and K epsilon for the heat transfer and turbulence. And um, with uh, boundary conditions for compressor, um, there is a, um, quite a, a, some, some complications. So normally you also need to use the pair of P total inlet and P, uh, P static um, outlet. Uh, but um, did you have the lectures in, about compressor characteristics? Uh, just as just the French, I think. I don't know if uh, the, which, which one? I have the book in front of me, but I don't know if that's the right one. Uh, I mean uh, that uh, when you uh, perform the profiling of your compressor blade, you and the calculation of your uh, compressor stage, uh, you may get the parameters uh, that are not correspond to the design point of your compressor. So that means that your compressor, uh, your um, exact uh, parameters could be closer to the surge or to the stall of your compressor. And uh, at this, um, and these regimes could be some problems with simulation because they are very unstable. Uh, and this uh, couple of P total inlet and P static outlet will not be uh, appropriate for you. So uh, my suggestion for compressor guys is the following. Uh, as the first option, you can use uh, this one uh, as for the turbines. So you will need to set up both um, total pressure, total temperature, uh, and static pressure at the outlet. Uh, but in case you have some problems with uh, the calculation of your compressor, 
you will need to change uh, the uh, boundary com conditions plates to uh, total pressure at the inlet and mass flow um, at the outlet. But um, here, um, be careful with this um, option because um, the uh, mass flow rate you had from uh, for your calculations it's for the whole machine so if you would like to set up the value from your calculation you will need to select uh, this option per machine oh, okay and if we speaking about per passage or per component so you will need to uh, introduce here the value which is equal um, for example because we are speaking about outlets so um, uh, G3 is equal to G1 which is for, in my case uh, 80 and I need to divide this value by the number of um, uh, guide vanes so in this case there will be the value for per component but in order to avoid some mistakes my suggestion is to use the option per machine and introduce the value from the calculation okay okay um, as I already told you, uh, the first option is to use uh, this um, uh, uh, total pressure at the inlet and static pressure at the outlet. So, okay. um, and uh, another another uh, difference for the um, for the compressor comparing to the um, to the turbine. Uh, the uh, flow direction is not normal to boundary because um, we have some value of alpha 1 for the rotor blade. So, and here is the uh, method how to introduce this uh, alpha 1. Um, so, um, we will use cylindrical components and we will set up A and T, which are correspond to axial and the uh, tangential direction of um, this vector the radial direction will be zero for us so what is the procedure for example in my case my alpha one mean that means uh, that i've taken alpha one from the middle section from the middle diameter so um, um just a second uh my alpha one is greater than uh, 45 uh, zero, uh, d degrees uh, that means that uh, Excel um, component for this um, angle will be greater than the tangential component so I'm going for the calculator to calculate sinus and cosinus for my angle for example I will take um, uh, 54 and I calculate um, sinus and this sinus um, and I can see that sinus is greater than the cosinus so um, and I know that the XL component is greater than the tangential one so I will introduce here uh, the value for sinus which was, uh, like, like this and cosinus like this is it understandable? Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Okay, uh, but maybe there will be some problems with uh, the uh, tangential direction of the flow. We'll check this a little bit later. Uh, for now, I can have these components. And uh, press next. Okay, Qu Quentin, which are these numbers? Uh, for me, I think it's uh, 0 0.94 for A, and for the last one is 0 0.32. Uh -huh. And what about uh, mm, pressure and uh, temperature? Uh, uh, pressure is uh, 56,615. And uh, temperature... Uh, wait, wait, again? 56,600. Uh, 15. 
Okay. And the, the, the temperature is 287.4. Okay. And the, the mass flow rate, maybe you want uh, 33, 35.4, sorry. Okay, perfect. Okay, thank you. We can go next. Um, here at the interfaces, you will have four of them. For me, it's only three because I've skipped the um, trout tip. Uh, yes. Here it's the same like for the uh, turbine periodics for both domains. Uh, the interface, which is um, responsible for transferring data between uh, these uh, two domains. And the uh, first one for you will be for the um, for the radial gap. Okay. Mm -hmm. We press next. Um, here once again you can check all the boundary conditions uh, whether they um, correspond to the right location uh, in the model or not. But usually with this turbo mode, um, with simple uh, stuff, there will not be uh, a lot of problems. And we press next. And finish. And uh, for compressor, we need to check uh, whether the, we set up the um, right flow direction uh, component. So um, to do this, we are going to R1 inlet. Then for the plot options, uh, boundary vector and apply. Okay. Um, so I... Uh, can obviously say that my um, direction of the flow is not correct. I will explain you uh, now why. So, and I need to change that component or tangential component to minus. Now it is correct. Um, I will explain you the mechanism. How can you check that uh, everything is uh, correct with uh, your um, uh, with your um, orientation? So imagine the velocity triangles. So this vector is a vector of absolute velocity. So then we uh, put here the vector of our circumferential velocity because we know that the uh, location of this vector is this one. We set it up uh, this vector by ourselves. And after that, you can draw the third vector, which is vector of uh, relative velocity. And this vector of relative velocity, they have to go uh, like uh, along the along the blade. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because better one, because the um, orientation of this vector of um, relative velocity is correspond to the angle beta one, and beta one is uh, selected or calculated in such a way that, or vice versa, the blade is created in such a way that the uh, blade angle at the inlet will be uh, correspond to the uh, beta one of the flow. Okay. So this is a solution. How how can you check uh, whether um, the correctness is okay or not? Because, um, the other criteria here is there will be some problems during your calculations, some unphysical um, 
behavior of the flow or some bad uh, flow structure or bad parameters but i think it's it's better to think about this uh, ahead before you start your calculation okay First, you also have some problems you just need to change the uh, theta component uh, from plus to minus or vice versa so that's all uh, for the compressor, uh, the solver control will be exactly the same. Um, high resolution or first order for the turbulent, uh, turbulence numeric, it depends on the stability of your calculation. 1,000 uh, iterations uh, for, the, uh, for the compressor will be okay because could be some problems uh, during the calculations. And uh, the convergence criteria Again, we need to add some zeros. Okay. Uh, and uh, for material, you also will use air ideal gas. <clears throat> for material group, you also need to select air data only. <clears throat> and at uh, this step, your tables from the document are uh, the first one uh, and the third one. Okay. So, uh, mm -hmm. so I will change them right now. Uh, so you will need to also uh, change the specific heat capacity and in transfer quantity dynamic viscosity using this formula. Okay. I assume that all, and the, the starting of the calculation process is the same as the turbine, and the, uh, you can use the same criteria like uh, PMET in um, uh, rotor blade and uh, uh, guide blade. But okay. if you have some problems, uh, I mean, the crash of your calculation after, I don't know, 100 or 200 iterations, uh, please write. Or Mr. Maturin, and uh, we, will, we will think about some possible solution. But uh, first option for you is to change your boundary condition at the outlet to the mass flow rate. Uh, then you need to get stable solution using this um, uh, mass flow, flow rate um, at the outlet. And after that, um, you may use this solution as the initial condition for the solution with the with, uh, Static but I think we can discuss this later in case we Any questions about compressor? No, I think that's clear. It's clear. Yeah. So, yes, it's clear. Yes, it's okay. I think uh, for uh, all of you, I mean, it doesn't matter compressor or turbine, at this stage, you just need to change the material properties. If you're interested, you can try to improve mesh, but uh, this mesh is quite okay for the first calculations. And uh, yes, you can start the calculations, and when you're ready with the results, I think we will do the last uh, lesson of how to post-process uh, the results of uh, compressor and turbine uh, simulations. I mean, which contours we're interested in, which um, um, specific feature of the flow can we find in the blade passages of uh, compressor and turbine and how to calculate, how to define the main parameters, I mean, um, efficiency and um, uh, power for turbine and um, uh, pressure ratio for both turbine material and so on. Okay. So, that is why my suggestion for you is to start this simulation um, let me know when you're ready with uh, the solutions, and we will uh, um, set up the, uh, the time for your lesson. Okay. Perfect. You, you think that 500 uh, iterations are enough? Uh, for compressor or for turbine? For both. Mm -hmm. uh, both? For turbine, definitely yes. 500 uh, should be okay. For compressor, I will not say so because there could be some some problems uh, in terms of this um, location of your point on, on compressor characteristics. So for a compressor, I would leave 1,000 
uh, iteration, start the calculation, and if you're sure that your simulation is quite okay, just can stop uh, your calculation at any moment. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so 1000. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It's okay. Yes, yes, I think so. So, uh, start your calculation, write me if you have any problems, and, and we will discuss the results later. Okay. Thank you very much. Hope you are Thank not you. very tired. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's okay. No, it's okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you for your patience. You all the problems. <laughs> have a nice, have a nice day. Have a nice evening. Yeah. And, uh, let's stay in touch and yes. see you soon. Okay. See you. See you. Okay. <laughs> and the recording will be uh, available. <laughs> In the, in the conversation. Very long, but still. Three hours, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. Thank you very much. See you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye.